This is the Tech Support Guys show, episode 59 for September 9th, 2012. Call me Metro, maybe. Welcome to the Tech Support Guy Show. I'm Mike Cermak, known on the site as Tech Guy. With me today is Dan McCarthy. Good afternoon. How are you doing today, Danny? I am neato, nifty, keen. You always are. I like that. That's a good catchphrase for you. Um, let's jump into a couple of stories. We uh, have some interesting ones coming out. The biggest story that's that's not a story yet is iPhone 5 is supposed to come out next week. Have you followed that at all? Have you heard all the rumors? Yeah, I, I've been following it a little bit. Uh, I guess the, the rumors are we're expecting a bigger screen size, an actual four-inch diagonal uh, use area. Uh, some people are claiming they've seen uh, mock-ups that show an NFC chip, which is a near-field chip that would allow like Google Wallet type of uh, functionality using your cell phone to pay for uh, things at the checkout line. Mm-hmm. Um, 4G, obviously, 4G LTE. Um, also known really as actual 4G. Right, right. <laughs> well, you, you know, <laughs> that's interesting because Sprint, uh, Sprint bet on uh, 4G as WiMAX. I don't know if you remember WiMAX. Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. That was at CES when, well, I don't know if that was when we were there or if that was the year before. I think that was the year before, but WiMAX, actually, WiMAX looked really interesting, except that it was just about as fast as 3G. Uh-huh. It was, it was no faster than any 3G, but... Uh, uh, yes, so true 4G LTE. Um, I don't think there's really anything else. No. Well, I mean, there's a couple others, you know, rumors going around about it, but that's certainly the biggest ones. And, of course, a faster chip in it, you know, faster processor. And we shall see. So the story is that supposedly here on the 12th, which uh, will probably be about the same time this uh, recorded video will be out and available, uh, they're going to be making their big announcement, and everyone expects that that's likely to be the iPhone 5 announcement. It's not official yet, but maybe by the time you're listening to it, it is. Uh, and whenever it becomes official in our next show, we will uh, do a roundup on that as well just to uh, keep you updated on that. Um, and the other big thing going on is Amazon has another device that's coming down the pipeline. Actually, Amazon has a, a handful of devices coming down. Um, so this past Thursday, yes, Thursday, they had held a news conference in uh, Santa Monica at an airport, conveniently enough. Uh, they rented an entire hangar and set up shop in there. And they announced the new uh, e-reader. What is it? The Amazon Paperlite? Let's see. Paper. Yeah, Paperwhite. That's correct. All right. Thank you. Paper white. Yes. So this one, uh, they've said that that they've added a light to it. So that's the big, uh, (laughs) the big to do. They've they've got the light on there. And I think they said with the light on, the new battery would last eight weeks. Wow. Yeah. Well, that's good for the zombie apocalypse because not only does it give you something to read, you can read your survival guides on it, but then it also serves as a functioning flashlight. Right, and if you've built a solar-powered uh, USB charger, uh-huh, right. you, you, you can just, after that eight weeks expires, you'll be able to use the sun and now harness does, that. So. Does, the, does the paper white still run on their whisper net on the uh, over cellular? I, you know, honestly, I, I, didn't, um, I didn't tune in for the uh, paper white. That was one of the things I liked most about the old Amazon Kindle, which is what I still have is that it's, you had that whisper net where you didn't have to pay a monthly charge, but it lets you download books over cellular. Yeah, right. they, still got, they still have that. So the, the Paperwhite Wi-Fi only will be, uh, let's see, uh, 119 Wi-Fi only. Wi-Fi plus 3G is 180. Uh-huh. Yeah. So um, you can get them. I, I guess those are prices with ads, and if you want to opt out of the ads, it's a little bit more, 139 and 199 respectively. That's interesting. Or, I didn't know they had ads in it. Boy, I'm out of, out of the loop. Well, what's really interesting there, the, the Kindle Fire does not have apps or, or ads right now. So they're, right they're now. Ads right, right now, but they just added that. So uh, going into to their press conference, they've... Um, re-released, if you will, the the original Kindle Fire. And what they've done with it is they've doubled the memory 
and they've uh, updated their Kindle Fire interface to include a couple of new apps. But uh, with with that, I believe they're adding ads to that version, and then they have a 7-inch Kindle Fire HD, and then they have the 8.9-inch Kindle Fire H- HD, and then the 8.9-inch Kindle Fire HD plus LTE. So you can get... Uh, it's too complicated. It's too many different options. I agree. It is, it is fairly complicated. So I think they kept the original Kindle Fire down around for bargain shoppers, if you will, just to get people into the Kindle Fire. So they've reduced the cost with that to $159, which is, for, for that kind of device, that's amazing. They're definitely losing money on that. They're, yeah, they're adding. It's like they're, a printer, right? They're, they're making money yeah. on, the, uh, on you buying the books rather than, yeah, or it, buying the ink versus buying the device. Exactly, exactly. They're definitely, and uh, Bezos said during the press conference that I'm not looking to make money off the hardware. I'm looking to make money off of services right. and repeat customers. That's the way it so, works. Yeah, yeah. It, uh, it was really interesting. So the, um, the 7-inch Fire HD, what, let me give you, the, let me pull up my spec sheet on that. Where did it go? It has, um, where? Where, where, sorry, gotta find. No worries. Do you have any of these devices? Do you have a Kindle or a Kindle Fire? I have a Kindle Fire and a Kindle. Actually, I gave my Kindle away to uh, my niece. Uh, my wife uses a uh, Kindle Fire, and I have a Nexus Seven. Uh huh. So um, let's go down the the Fire HD. It will have its own version of Ice Cream Sandwich. Um. And that was actually a big disappointment for the, the tech bloggers there that were reviewing it. The ice cream sandwich is not nearly as snappy or responsive as uh, Jelly Bean, which mm-hmm. is what the Nexus 7 was, was released on. So it's got a 7-inch a diagonal, 1280 by 800 resolution, which is the, the same, exactly the same as the uh, uh, Nexus 7. Uh, pixels per inch are roughly 220. Uh, it does not use the same processor. It does not use the Tegra 3 quad-core processor. Instead, it uses uh, an OMAP 4470 uh, for the 8.9-inch and an OMAP 4460 for the 7-inch. Those are actually uh, dual-core processors, but if you read the specs on them, they're actually quad-core processors. They have two cores that run at, uh, for the 4460, it runs at 1.2 gigahertz. For the uh, 4470, it runs at 1.5 for the two two of the processors, and then they have other processors that are used for um, softer tasks, if you will, the smooth scrolling, uh, devices that don't take much processing power. So they have two processors there that handle the, the, the switching of tasks and things like that. So what is their purpose for these devices? I, I'm guessing with dual processors, they're not thinking you're just going to read books. So, no, no they're, they're, I, I guess they're... <laughs> Uh, Bezos came out in the press conference and said, people don't want gadgets. That's why they haven't been buying Android tablets. They mm-hmm. want services. So um, Amazon also had recently announced that they had another deal with, uh, what was this, the, the um, technology behind it, with another um, film agency to provide more films using uh, instant video. What was that? It's a universal yeah, I heard, technology. I heard that too. So that's what Amazon's trying to do. They're trying to give you all of your media in one place. Mm-hmm. They're trying to do what Apple has been trying to do for a while. Uh, and I think they have a little, uh, I guess, what is it, competitive edge. Yeah, they do in I terms guess. of books, certainly not in audio. Not in, uh, audio is a little arguable, but uh, video. I mean, I guess I they think- have had the Amazon MP3 store for a long time. They do have a lot of existing agreements. It just hasn't had the... The, and there's traction. advantages to it. It has an attraction, right? I, I mean, I like Amazon MP3 just because you get it as a straight MP3. It's not some, you know, DRM Apple. You know, yes. you have to convert it to something I can use it in. Even yeah. if it does, even if it's just Apple AAC or something that doesn't have uh, a DRM in it, it's still a hassle to convert it to something you know that I can use anywhere else. Right. I don't know. It just seems why not put it in a straight MP3. I'm with you. I'm with you. So I do like that about the Amazons. So, well, this is interesting, though. I mean, I guess we'll we'll see. But I think they're. I, I'm worried about them doing too many devices and not making the purpose of the device clear enough. I don't know if people are going to see that as an obvious, uh, an obvious competitor to the iPad or to Android, 
you know, tablets, but... So the 8.9 inch specifically is a competitor to the, uh, or is, I, I guess, positioned to be a competitor to the iPad. Now, where, where Amazon is never going to compete with Apple right now is on the apps. You know, no one's going to make a guitar app for the Kindle Fire. Now, why not? Why would you? Well, because it's an Android device, it shouldn't be too hard to port it. You know, now for the Kindle devices, do they have their own app store, or can you just use the Google Play Store like you would any other Android device? So that's one of the the downsides to the Kindle Fires. The, you have Amazon specific app store, and you do not have access to the Google Play Store. So all of your media there, you're 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 locked out of it, if you will, unless you do something drastic like root it, which. Uh, I'll be honest with you, I plan to buy one of the 8.9 inch and I'm going to root it and I'm going to see how how well it does with Jelly Bean. Yeah. Hmm. But uh, I, Amazon, Amazon isn't courting developers like it, like Apple is. You know, it, Apple, the, the Amazon App Store isn't the, the sexy app store to go after and develop for. Yeah. Well, there's not enough market there. And this is where Apple has always won against competitors. They market the hell out of themselves. Right. So uh, there, were, there were comments made that Bezos was trying to be like Steve Jobs in, in the presentation of this news conference. And maybe he was, but where Amazon and other companies have always failed compared to Apple, is they don't put the marketing genius behind their products and services like Apple does. Yeah. That's why you have such devoted... Uh, devoted fan base on on apple i mean they they market themselves well yeah they do they they've got good and and good user interface people but i was playing with the kindle fire and it's the user interface is not bad so my only complaint about the fire interface compared to the uh, nexus 7 specifically is it's not nearly as responsive you definitely have to wait uh when you use the the fire compared to the nexus well, that's 7. maybe that why you need the dual core processor well, the the uh, I believe the, the 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 original Fire version had a dual core processor, but it wasn't. It, it's I think it's the version of Android that it's based on. Doesn't it seem a little bit ridiculous to have a dual core processor to read books? It does. So, <laughs> <laughs> if you're just going to read books, then you're going to get the Paperwhite. You're not going to get yeah. You're, you're not going to get the Fire. Although for the prices that you can get the original Fire for, I don't see why not. I mean, it's you know forty, fifty dollars more to get uh, the App Store, the the cloud storage, uh, the videos and whatnot. Right. So and at least have the ability to use. And then maybe you don't need another device. Maybe you don't need an Android right. uh, tablet because that is an Android tablet. <laughs> and uh, yeah. A couple of things that they've they've done with the new operating system, their personalized, if you will, uh, fork of ice cream sandwich. They've uh, they've ported X Ray. Are you familiar with X Ray? No, I've never heard of it. X Ray is a, a technology that they use for um, basically like dictionary, Wikipedia searches in books. So if you highlight a word when you're reading on your Kindle, it'll pop up a definition, uh, potentially YouTube videos and things like that. Uh huh. Well, they ported that to their movie. So when you pause a movie, and as I understand it, if you were to, say, click on an actor, you, you can get a pop-up of all of the movies that that actor has been in and potentially get some YouTube links and Wikipedia entries for the, uh, the actor. So they've... Do you use Trillion? Uh, no, I, I used to, but I haven't in a long time. Trillion used to do this the, a similar thing. You it would highlight uh, phrases or words and give you um, extra information about them, hmm. and, and that's kind of what X Ray is. So they they brought that to their movies, which I thought was pretty interesting. I didn't know it existed for books until they said they ported it to the movies, because um, I don't actually use the Kindle. I bought the Kindle and the Kindle Fire from my wife. So uh, I thought that was pretty interesting. I am excited for the device. The price point on these is. Uh, uh, really sweet. So the uh, 8.9 inch is uh, $300 without LTE, and then I think it's $500 with LTE. Um, and Bezos came out and said the only thing that would make 500, a $500 price point make sense would be offering uh, LTE service. And the LTE service cost, uh, what was it, $79 a year? No, $59 a year, something like that. I mean, it's nothing. But you only get 250 megabytes per uh, per month. Uh huh. 
But uh, and, that's, and it's not gonna, that's not going to be a lot of video. Right, exactly. And, well, it's been compared to what Apple does uh, as far as using on iPad usage. But I think what, uh, what people aren't noting there is that the iPad, when it's bought from, like, say, Verizon or AT&T or whatever, it, you have a contract with them. But Apple also offers their own similar deal for a little bit more that is also limited at uh, uh, 250 megabytes per per month. Hmm. But I have the Nexus 7, and it's it's Wi-Fi only. And I I Sprint is my carrier, so I actually I tether to my to my phone rather than actually using any data plan on the on the tablet yeah, itself. Yeah, sure. That's what I do on my iPad as well, tether to and the phone. Since I have unlimited data on my plan, I mean, it makes sense. There's no need for uh, another unlimited data plan on on my tablet, if you will. Yeah. All right. I think that's all I have on hey, you're, the... You seem excited about this. I can't wait for you to get one in your hands and show it to us. Yeah, I am pretty excited. I talked to, to Holly about getting the uh, uh, eight point nine inches a family device because they're uh, one of the new uh, new things they're bringing out is called free time, and it's a way that you can limit your uh, your children's exposure to the device. So that's a good idea. That it really is because my oldest he will play with the device until he goes cross eyed. <laughs> Sounds like I mean, someone you, else I know. Exactly. So <laughs> I. And, you know, I want him to be a little more well-adjusted than I am. So <laughs> <laughs> so I do want to uh, limit, uh, you know, game time, if you will. I want to limit the amount of time he can play Angry Birds on the device, but I don't want to have to watch over him. So the free time is definitely something that I'm looking forward to. Now, can you limit particular applications? Like, can you say only so much time in uh, Angry Birds, but as much reading uh, Moby Dick as he wants? That is my understanding. That's, that's good. That makes yeah. sense. Yeah. All right. I'm excited about it. All right. Keep us updated. Bring uh, bring one to to show and tell next time. Will do. As soon as uh, so, the November November twentieth is the release date for the uh, eight point nine inch. Just in time Uh, for Christmas. Next week, September fourteenth, is the uh, release date for the new Fire HD seven inch, and the uh, existing Fires, I believe, are back in manufacturing with their double memory. Good. Already. Mm Mm-hmm. All right, I'm really done this time. I don't believe you. All right, uh, what other uh, stories we have we want to hit up? I had one that someone posted on Tech Support Guy. i got to see who posted this. I thought it was pretty cute. Sepala? Sepala? I'm not sure how uh, how that's pronounced. Uh, who I believe is a Java programmer, uh, if I'm not mistaken. I think he just contacted me recently. Uh, so you might get along well with him. But uh, in any event, he posted this. Uh, Mercedes has this new car, zero emissions uh, vehicle and their marketing gimmick to uh, advertise it is that they covered it in LED panels and uh, made it and put a camera on the other side of it so that it appears to be invisible. The LED panels show the image of what the camera on the other side of the car is. is yeah, you, you, so you're picking up the you got the gimmick. So I'm gonna show the video here for those who are watching and. Uh, and uh, it's it's pretty cute what they did, and it's a good gimmick, and it certainly has gone viral as a result. This has almost 10 million views on YouTube. And uh, as always, I'll remind people that if you are listening to the audio only, you can go and go to techguy.tv to watch the video. And we also are uh, streaming this live whenever we uh, record it. So you can go to techguy.tv and see when we're going to stream the next video and join us in the chat room. We've got a couple people in there watching right now. And... Uh, but you can see this car driving down the road here, and you can see right through it other than the tires. They didn't cover the tire or the wheel wells there with uh, with uh, LEDs. I think I would have done that, but but maybe they wanted it to still look like it as a car. I, I'm sure they were afraid that it would actually uh, be thrown off of the car. I would think you would be able to get down and cover this pretty easily. I mean, certainly not if you get up to you know 100 miles an hour, but if you're driving at city speeds or, in this case, just have it parked. You could certainly. <laughs> <laughs> the looks on the faces are, are. It's pretty cute. It really is. It is. And, um, you know, it started an interesting discussion on the uh, site about, uh, you know, uh, uh, honest officer. I didn't see him there. 
and uh, you know, uh, and a lot of interesting conversations about it. And one person said, yeah, maybe you could make it flash uh, the LED so you could help find your car in the uh, parking lot. And uh, and I suggested that you know it, that if you didn't want it to be invisible, you could always just put the image of another car on your LED panels. And, you you know, drive a Ferrari one day if you wanted to. And so, so it was. It's just kind of a neat neat uh, thing that's gone viral here. So. You can no, look I'm that not. up on, on Tech Eye TV. We'll have a link there. That, that gives me all kinds of ideas. Like I could, uh, and, and over my license plate, use LED <laughs> uh, the LED display so I can display the license plate of the person in front of me. Now, something tells me that might not be legal. It might not be. There but it might would be, be a laws. Fun usage. <laughs> yeah. It would be a fun usage. Or just program it to do some, gener- some randomly generated license plate. <laughs> Every couple minutes, That's- just boom, different one. Well, you know, when when I'm planning on running that red light that has a camera on it, just put a well. Just put, no, that would be too obvious if you had like a fake license plate number. But whenever you're running the red light, or whenever you're over a certain speed, maybe the it just becomes pixelated, you know, or just just looks, yeah. So it looks like from you know, if you're looking at the picture that the camera took, it's just. Uh, <laughs> or maybe yeah. you could put a special message there for the police officer who is uh, looking at the picture. Right, like N L N. I don't know what that stands for. Just, just, just look at it. Is that family friendly? Are you allowed to say that in here? Yeah, it's it's just look at it in the chat room. Just look at it. Look at the chat room. Oh. <laughs> no, I don't think that's family friendly. <laughs> well, you know, it's it maybe isn't family friendly, but I didn't say anything, so it's all right. I had to look it up, and apparently, uh, it is Laboratorio Nacional de mm. Luz, the Brazilian National Laboratory. No. Um, <laughs> moving along. Uh, did we talk about Windows XP upgrade? We did not. So there's uh, going to be a new version of Windows coming out. I don't know if anyone knows about that yet. And uh, <laughs> Windows 8 is coming out here very shortly. And Microsoft announced some pricing for Windows 8. And uh, among those is that Windows XP users can upgrade directly to Windows 8 for $40. Which I thought was pretty nice. A lot of XP users are happy about that, that they get to skip Vista and skip 7 and go directly to Windows 8 if they so choose. How does it feel to be bribed? Is that what that is? Is that bribery? Well, before we get into your opinion of how great Windows 8 is, I would also like to mention that for those people who are holding off to buy a new computer for Windows 8, Dan would strongly encourage you in a couple minutes instead to buy a computer now with Windows 7. And if you pay an extra $15, if you buy a computer between now and when Windows 8 comes out, the upgrade to Windows 8 is just $15, which is a good bargain. I mean, Good bribe. Good bargain is how that's pronounced. Bribe. Let me let me bribe. <laughs> so Dan, let me ask you: Have you used Windows Eight at all yet? I have. Uh, I used a release candidate. Uh-huh. I have not uh, installed anything, and I and I hate it. So why I do you hate it? I mean, come on. I have a release candidate on a tablet here, and it's not that bad. Exactly. You have it on a tablet. Uh-huh. I thought you were going to going to highlight the fact that I the great uh, uh, way I, I I described it and trying to build it up is it's not that bad. <laughs> it, 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 it may not be bad for a tablet, but I, I I've had a touchscreen laptop, and uh, I used it once because it was a novelty. Um, yeah, there, there's I, I'm a, I'm a developer. I don't want to have to type on screen and touch my my monitor yeah. to actually interface with the with the device. Um. I, I think that if if Microsoft wanted to get into the uh, mobile business, then they should have gotten in, gotten into the mobile business. But it seems like they're trying to get out of the desktop operating system. Or I think they're in the let's system. try and stay relevant business. And I don't think this is a way to stay relevant. I mean, that would be like uh, uh, Mac OS X going to uh, a, a touch interface only. Like uh, everyone, like everyone iOS. Has a, well, yeah. <laughs> that was a good reaction, man. <laughs> yeah. Winning. I, yeah, yeah. I, well, in I our accept area, your Mike, surrender. We, no, no. In our area, we have sheets, right, Mike? Yes. So, uh, a very for, common for gas the, station. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, yeah, a very common gas station that, that sells food, like uh, almost like a Blimpies, if you will. And they have touchscreen devices where you can order your food. They call it MTO, made to order. And they have these screens that you can touch. They have big blocks, you know, that Burger. you can touch to, to, to 
make your order. Mm -hmm. And that's great. It's a great interface for that. Fantastic. But that's kind of what they're doing with Windows 8. You have very big blocks to do anything on your home screen, if you will. What, what the hell? <laughs> that well, is what I mean, people want, Dan. That's, that's, have you looked at an iPad? That's, it's got big icons on it. It's a touch screen. It's not designed necessarily yeah. for generating content. It's designed for receiving content. Right. And uh, I, I think that yeah, Hobo in the chat room says it's good for users, bad for developers. Developers don't like it. Users do like it. And I think it depends a lot on the user. If, if the purpose of the operating system, like iOS, is to be used on a tablet, then it's a perfect interface. And if the purpose of Windows 8 is to be used on a tablet, I think you'll agree it's a great interface for that. Yes. And if they're going to have any hope of competing with Apple in tablets and mobile devices, they have to do this. I right, mean, but see, Apple has an operating system that allows for content development as well as content consumption. So you're saying that they need to have Windows 8 as their mobile operating system and keep Windows 7 as their desktop operating system? You just nailed it. Okay. I think Microsoft needs to hire us. I think I, I, I think that Microsoft used to have mobile versions, CE. Um, why why go away from it? Why? I, shall I answer? Shall I, shall I play dev, devil's advocate here? Please. They, please. they have said that they like having a single user interface, a single user experience across multiple devices. So whether you're using your phone or your tablet or your computer or, what, or your laptop, whatever it is, you have the same user interface. You don't have to relearn things. Mm. I, I, I guess, except I'm not five years old. I know how to use a computer and a keyboard, so I'm not geriatric either, so I don't need big square blocks now, to Now, wait touch. a minute. Are you, you just cut out so many people. Are you saying, you know, because I, young people and old people shouldn't use computers? And no. those who are computer illiterate, just the heck with them? There's no reason no, to try and make computers no, more user-friendly? No, we no, should go no, back I, to I, DOS? <laughs> Why aren't we yes, just writing everything please. in Fortran? Is that please, what you're saying? Go, yes, go back to DOS. Dial-ups fast DOS. enough for anyone? I don't know how that right. would go in there. All right. <laughs> no, but I, <laughs> simple user interfaces are fine for people who are just getting into technology or who have um, accessibility handicaps that require um, accessibility. Computer illiteracy, is that a handicap? Yes, it is. <laughs> I mean, come on, we're in the 21st century. Everything is computer-related. Everything. Yes, computer illiteracy is a handicap. <laughs> so, you know, touchscreen devices are, or touchscreen interfaces are great when you're learning something. You know, um, having an interface that, that limits you to what you, what you can do um, because of that, because of that, the, the touchscreen interface is great for for my 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 five year old, who's now six, my seven year old, for them to learn what the computer can do for them. But is it great for developing content, any kind of content? No, it's not. It's not conducive to that, even with. What is it, uh, Photoshop Touch or whatever? Well, and certainly they don't expect people to be developing applications on in the Windows 8 and Metro interface. That's why there's still a desktop button, right? Well, you know what's funny about that is that they're, uh, as, I, as I recall, they're forcing the Metro style in the new version of uh, Windows, uh, not Windows, uh, Visual Studio. Oh, really? Well, that'll be interesting to see. Yeah, but, they, they were, but even so, your argument is kind of... Which they are not of, calling Metro anymore, by the way. If what? That's a no-no. Yeah, you can't call it Metro. Don't what? call it Metro. No, I, I didn't metro. get that memo. It's, no, it is not Metro. Are don't you serious? I am serious. Don't call it Metro. I don't know what they're calling it now, but they, they, have, they have retracted Metro. No way. I'm making it up. You should look it up. I mean, look My, it up. I just Googled it, and I easily found at least 10 articles that confirm what you're saying. And yet, I still <laughs> refuse to believe it. So why is that? Do they think Metro has such a bad name already? I think that I, I think they've seen uh, in the developer world people are people are not happy with Metro, the Metro interface. Developers don't want to develop for it. Um, Maybe they need to rename Windows Eight in advance just to. I, quite honestly, I think that's what they were trying to do with with trying to get Metro out, out of there. But they they've really angered the publishing industry who is who has begun writing. How tos and whatnot books on on how to use Metro. Metro. <laughs> so I found an article here. It says that uh, as of today, Metro is no longer a word Microsoft will be using to describe 
anything to do with their product lineup. It has officially been killed off as a term Microsoft staff and marketing is allowed to use. The specific reason for this sudden change remains unclear. It was first thought to be due to a trademark infringement that Microsoft couldn't settle with German company Metro AG. <laughs> you know what? I think it. I think it's funny, and I think it's um, for our Orwellian fans out there. It is. It is very Big Brother like, <sighs> or maybe like Nazi Germany. No, it didn't really happen. Uh huh. We never said it. They've re- <laughs> they've retracted it from. Um, from documentation that they had released. So they have removed it from documentation previously released as if it never existed. It's funny. Anyway. I It seems to be f- trademark issues. Then they should have said that. Be honest with people. Well, and not only you that, but, you know, being Microsoft, maybe they should have looked into that first. Right. I don't know. You know, making mistakes is embarrassing. Trying to hide them up and getting the fact that you've tried to cover well, them up. Well, in their defense, the product's not out yet. Okay. Right. But we've been calling it Metro for a year, maybe more, and now we're not. So what? Are, they don't have a name for it yet? I've not heard a replacement name for it, but don't call it Metro. I'm going to write a song called Don't Call Me Metro. You should. We'll play it for take, the next episode. Take that how you will. <laughs> 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 I'm already thinking of lyrics right now. It says uh, a spokesperson from Microsoft said, "Quote: We have used Metro Style as a code name during the product development cycle across many of our product lines. As we are closer correct. to launch, <laughs> there, are you already gasping at their?" The, I read the that. I read oh, that, and that, that's just crap. As we get closer to launch and transition from industry dialogue to broad consumer dialogue, we will begin to use commercial names. So what it is is that Microsoft has always used numbers, except for Vista and ME and CE. I mean, they, NXP. They, well, yeah, okay. They've never really codenamed their 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 projects. Well, they have certainly and, codenamed different versions of Windows before it came out. Sure, Longhorn but, and Chicago and... Right, right. And I think they just felt goofy. Call me Metro, maybe. <laughs> I love it. That's perfect. How about you win? That's our show title. I think maybe they just felt juvenile. You know, you've got uh, Apple who who uses various cats, and uh, you've got uh, Google. Google who uses desserts, right? So or sweets. So I don't I don't know. Maybe they just felt juvenile. Maybe they just felt like really we are doing me too and this is just ridiculous. I don't know. <laughs> I don't like Windows 8. I don't like the fact that Microsoft is being weird about Metro. I think uh, I feel for the publishers for the the, the content uh, developers out there that are now having to rewrite their content to remove Metro, and I don't know what the hell they're replacing it with. Well, but. how many developers is that really going to affect? I mean, it's they're still designing it in the same style. It's just not called micro. I mean, not called Metro. It's not the developers. It's the actual print. Uh huh. The publishers. The pub. Well, not the. Pu- uh, I don't care about the publishers too much. I care about the people writing. Well, everyone reads uh, on Amazon Kindle now, anyway. So they just have to do a, a search and replace and replace Metro with uh, Windows Eight, I guess. I don't know who, how you're going to describe it. We the need a word to describe Metro. We, yes. we need a symbol. We do. We, we need, need a symbol. symbol. <laughs> <laughs> but, but in all seriousness, though, we do need a term for that design. Yeah. I mean, they because it's not necessarily a Windows 8 design. It's going to be throughout future products and Windows 2000. I mean, Office 2013. Everything else is going to be that same style. Yeah. We need a, a term for it. Hmm. All right. So. Somebody, I, I can't remember who said this, but it was they were basically saying that this is just following Microsoft's standard path of every other operating system sucks. <laughs> so between I, uh, between XP and 7, you had Vista, which sucked. Between Windows 98 and XP, you had ME, which sucked. All right, first of all, I'm going to say that Vista didn't suck. But, uh, Vista sucked. S- Vista got a bad rap. Vista sucked. Vista M-E. was XP. Vista M-E, was however. XP with with an attempt at Windows Seven interface. <laughs> Anyhow, wait, wait, am I using Windows Seven or Windows Vista on this computer? <laughs> uh, Vista. I'm using. See, I can't even tell by looking at it. See, I'm, uh, well, uh, 
Except the one thing I do miss that I uh, in Vista that that is in seven is being able to drag the window to one side or the other and have it yeah. automatically resize to that split screen. That's not, that is not. Uh, they just Windows Seven rocks. Yeah, Windows Seven is a good operating system. Windows Eight, not so much. Yeah, Hobo in the chat room says that Windows Vista was his favorite operating system. Yeah, see, clearly Windows Vista sucks. It's not actually at all what he said. I was misquoting him to see if you were paying attention. Oh, I see. No, I see it. It's S star star K S. That means With rocks. Cap- Is yes, that, yes. That's the symbolic symbol. Symbolic. Vista for- socks. 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 No. It was just a socks. typo, you know. Um, but what about between uh, uh, three one and ninety eight? So ninety five uh, was awesome. Ninety five was actually all right, yeah. and ninety eight was awesome. They didn't have a crappy one in between there that I remember. Yeah, but you know those those were okay because they were still kind of you know DOS behind the scenes. I'm just saying. That's true. They were, and you are old school. I I am. I I, I do like I do like a command line environment. <laughs> all right, Danny. Any other stories you want to try and hit up here before we wrap it up? No. All right. We're going to close this up. Uh, once again, go to TechGuy.tv, check out when our next show is, watch previous episodes, write a comment on the video. Let us know what you think about this. Give us feedback. Let us know what you think about losing the Windows Metro name. Let us know what you think about Windows 8 coming out. And uh, and we will see you next time. Uh, Dan, do you have anything you want to plug? Nope. Okay. We need to. You know what you need to do, Dan? You need to start a blog about not Windows File, not Windows 8 Hayton, but you need to start a blog about just uh, like uh, dad hacks or something like that. Well, that, that is a good idea. Every time I talk to you, I'm com- I'm 100 percent serious here. Every time I talk to you, you are building something different for your kids. You're building a what were some of the yeah. things you were doing? A marshmallow gun. You had a a photo uh, a photo booth that made yeah. it look like they were King Kong in a city. There, you built that that car wash thing out of PVC pipe. Every time I talk to you, you're building something else for your kids, or have some kind of different thing going on. I think you need a blog to to share some of these ideas, even if they are ideas that you are stealing from other places. You know, like I know the car wash <laughs> one, and I mean I don't mean stealing, but I mean you found in other places, like the car wash one. You can you can say I found this idea here. Here's the results. Here's how it worked out for me. And you know, compile it. I mean, you don't have to come up with new ideas. But I, I'm I'm serious, Danny. Dad hacks is already taken. Is there is there anything it useful is. there? Um, I don't know. You got something went, like that. You know, you got to work on that. That that bad request or invalid host name. Somebody is squatting. Yeah, well, you need to email that guy and tell him you're going to send him some PVC pipe in exchange for that domain name. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're going to wrap this up. You work on that. That's your job for next I'm, time. I'm going to do and, it. Uh, oh, and, and Ecom uh, uh, says thanks for the pilot. My, that's my blog, my personal blog unrelated to technology, pilotmike.com. So I'll plug that. Check that out for videos of me flying and having a good time. And uh, we will. And next episode actually is going to be something a little different. I'm going to do a quick uh, review on some different technology. I'm going to try and go in between each of our long episodes with a short one, just reviewing some app or some piece of technology or doing a tech tip. So look out for that. That'll be coming out next. And give us some feedback. Let us know what you prefer and what you think and where we should go. We'll see you next time.